Jake, you ready? Yeah, just give me the thumbs oh, okay. up. Give me the thumbs up. Right. Uh, good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to the City Council workshop on our boards and commissions and other committees. Uh, this is something, a goal we gave City Manager Roloff to look at uh, uh, in this year, in 2017. So without further ado, I will turn it over to City Manager Roloff. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the, the, the council had received a copy of the report, uh, but if you don't have it with you, I have an extra copy if anybody needs one. Uh, this is, as the mayor said, this was something that the council asked me to take a look at, and I want to first thank uh, City Attorney Lawrenson, uh, Assistant City Manager, Director of Administrative Services, John Fitzpatrick, and my Administrative Assistant, Diane Moran. Each of them, at one level or another, did some, some research, and then uh, they also cracked the whip with departments to provide information. Um, it, it was really an interesting um, uh, study because uh, not only did I learn things about us, the information that we shared with our colleagues from other communities, it opened their eyes to, to this as well. And, and everybody does things differently. Uh, but I want to just go through just briefly. This is what we're going to be talking about in general in terms of our presentation today. We're going to talk about what, what we are calling required uh, boards, commissions, and <coughs> committees. And I just BCCs for short just because it was easier to um, to say it that way and separate what are required versus what are local option uh, talk about council liaisons to the boards commissions and committees and then different considerations that that we looked at and as we talked to different people for, for you to talk about and I'll get into those a little later but <clears throat> these are some of the considerations um, and then options for consideration uh, I would say that the options aren't necessarily um, these are the best things that you can do. Um, the only real discomfort I had about doing this study was because boards and commissions and committees are your jurisdiction. They exclusively belong to you, and I absolutely respect that. So when you're asking me to do something, that it, this kind of goes against the grain of what I was trained to do, and that's not to interfere in, in a legislative policy issue and boards and commission appointments are about as pure as you can get in terms of what is your jurisdiction so the recommendations are not necessarily meant oh you need to do it this way or that way it really is food for thought um, I think you wanted me to push the envelope a little bit that's what I I uh, sensed when council gave me this uh, the responsibility and it was interesting to do it but don't feel you're certainly not going to break any uh, sensitivities of mine uh, these are your boards commissions and committees and you get to do with them as you deem appropriate but there are some long-term things so I want to get into uh, uh, just one thing before we get going this really stemmed out of the frustration I've had for the last two years of trying to find people to serve on boards and commissions um, people are busy I mean there's there's so many people have so many obligations with family and work and so forth that is difficult. We've been meeting with all the chairs, the board and commissions for the last two years, trying to get their input as to how should we restructure some of the stuff right down to times, days of the week, that type of thing. Uh, we've run the, I think, a number of cases we've had quorum problems for some of the boards and commissions because there aren't enough people uh, show up. So uh, this is really where it began is, is, is trying to keep these boards and commissions, which are very critical to the city and to us, fully um, staffed is not the word, but uh, uh, full complement of people. So with that, I'll give it back to you, Mr. Roa. Well, Thank I'd you. just like to add, too, that um, it's very much appreciated that you organized the information with the matrices and you know what the staff involvement is, because that helps us make informed decisions. So thank you. Oh, you're most welcome. And like I said, my colleagues said the same thing. They're like, I never thought of it until you, until you asked us yourselves. So um, to get into that, uh, we do have, again, we're going to identify boards and commissions that are required of the city, either by statute or they're indirectly required because certain policy decisions of council then necessitate the creation of a board or commission, typically by statute. For example, if you, have a, if you decide to create a business improvement district, you, by definition, have created a bid business improvement district board. Uh, boards and commissions that have been created by council policy 
uh, and are not necessarily require a board commission or committee, but you've chosen to, either a specific policy area um, or a concern that, that you feel needs additional uh, citizen input on. Uh, and that's what we advertise. When we advertise for boards and commissions for the council, we want your input, we want your input. And we've sought a lot of input. Um, and then identify council liaisons, because that was the other issue that came up in terms of council liaisons. Uh, and whether or not these assignments are required or if they are created uh, by our own choice. And then identify any functional connection between committees and their respective departments. So a lot of the appendices that are there kind of answer those questions. Um, so the first one that came up was required boards and commissions. These are 10 that are required because um, either they're required by statute because we're a city, like for example, the uh, Police and Fire Commission. We have a Police and Fire Department, we have a Police and Fire Commission. But you can see the different boards and committees that exist because of um, either a decision we've made or they're just mandated in the first place. And that's 10 of them right off the start. So if you completely scrubbed yourselves of ev everything that you, you wanted to completely streamline it, you'd still have 10 at the end of the day, re regardless of that, unless you disbanded the Business Improvement District and you got rid of your extraterritorial zoning uh, ordinance. Those are things that are not gonna happen. So at the end of the day, you're gonna have 10. As Appendix A shows you, um, we also took a look at you know, where it is in the statute, where it is in the code. So all of these are identified somewhere in statute, and uh, then by then we adopt them either by reference or put whatever little twist we are allowed to do. We, there's some you can't do a lot of. Um, for example, plan commission, you don't have to have nine members. We do. That's just our choice. Um, there's also you know terms and what department gets assigned to it. Um, and then the, we also provided in, in Appendix A the number of meetings that are canceled over the past 24 months. We felt 24 was a little better than just going one year. But you can see that, for example, um, Police and Fire Commission didn't meet seven times. That was due to no items on the agenda. But they're a hiring body. So if we're not hiring or promoting, um, there's no need to meet. As opposed to, uh, you know, board of, uh, let's see, excuse me, there's, I think if you get to the second page, you'll see some of them. Um, the Commission on Equal Opportunity in Housing has never been called in the entire nine years I've been with the city. Now that's a specific uh, area that you would need to call. Um, parking utility, half of their meetings never took place because of either lack of a quorum or lack of items. So it gives you an idea of the different reasons why. Um, so we provided that information, and then B uh, is really just what I'll call an exhaustive summary of each border commission. So you can go to any border commission in particular, look at that and see what the, the history of it is, how it got created, uh, and things of that nature. So you get an idea. But 10 are required. Then there are 14 others that are what we're just referring to as local option boards, commissions, and committees. Now, some of these, these are all listed in alphabetical order. They're not by order of importance. Two of them, for example, the Parks Advisory Board and the Museum Board, there are provisions and statutes for a Parks Board or a Parks Commission and a Museum Board, but they're if you do it a certain way. We don't do it those certain ways. Uh, for example, the museum, to have a Museum Board, you would have to charge, you're required to charge free admission. We charge admission. That's not the only reason we don't we don't do it that way. But we have we've done those in lieu of those more required ones. They could just as easily be on the required list. So you know, I'm not suggesting the Parks and Museum Board go away because they're a fundamental part of what we do. But you'll see that some of these have obviously been created because of a, a policy issue uh, by the council. Um, most of these have existed for a while. Some that have uh, come up recently are more. Arts and beautification, uh, uh, bike and ped, uh, sustainability is about 10 years old. Rental housing was just redone. You'll notice that what's not on there is the diversity committee. So technically we have a 15th. So you can see that um, whenever an issue came up, and I'll take a little responsibility for the diversity committee, because when I did the report to council, I said one of your options is to do a committee. So it's sort of, you know, stop us before we 
before we do this again. Um, but you can see that uh, these are all by local option. And then in addition, we also have uh, the, Opera House, the Oshkosh Opera House Foundation Convention and Visitors Bureau. They're not boards and commissions per se, but they are something that we send a member to. Uh, so those are all there. That kind of say, oh, I'm, oh no, sorry. Oh, just, just, just fidgeting. fidgeting. Okay, that's good. How, which kind of segues finish. the council liaisons? And what going is the the CVB, the CVB, and then the Grand Opera House Foundation Board. There is part of the reason why the city has representation there is because of the financial. I would imagine because we as the city make a financial contribution to both of the obviously. To the grand, we do that, but then CVB they get the room Correct. tax dollars, which, in theory, can be you know used for m many different things. So that would that the, would the make practical sense side. To have they're that smart. A, they're smart to have yeah. a member of council on that, and that kind of segues to the the council liaisons. There's currently 15 boards, commissions, and committees that have council liaisons. This was interesting research that City Attorney Lawrence did. Not a single one is required by statute. Those are all local option. Now, why? I think the committees value your input. They value your ability to bring things back to the council from that committee and not necessarily advocate on behalf. That's, that's, your, that's your option if you choose to advocate on something. But certainly to be able to give a flavor of the meeting and the proceedings to your, uh, to your colleagues on the council. Um, everybody does it differently, but I know that more boards and commissions have asked in the past to have a council liaison. Uh, I remember one uh, uh, council member Pansky, we were at a bid meeting, and they, can we get a council liaison? They really liked the fact that council members came, but there's only, there's only seven of you, and even with 15, that that's, averages out to over two per person. And you know that your different assignments, some carry more, some carry less. Um, and that uh, council serve at, at least two, on average of two. Some council members serve on as many as four. Um, and the two assignments, I know that the, historically the mayors have uh, viewed the Opera House Foundation and the CVB as another assignment because they do have a substantial time commitment that they that they play. And I know with the vacancy on the CVB board, Deputy Mayor Herman's busy on top of his normal duty. So those are legitimate ones. So then you're really talking about 17. So that, you're now you're at about two and a half. Um, we conducted a survey and that's uh, what you see on Appendix C. And all I did, I did the cities that operate under Chapter 64 only because if there is a belief that there's a difference in council manager cities, you'd see it here. And this is where I got the comments. You can see that while we lead the pack with 24, um, we're not far behind some of the other ones. You can see that there's a lot of them that they've created by code, not by statute. And they don't necessarily have the committees that we talk about. They have their own committees that their own group, their own community has decided we need a border commission. And you'll see that how many have liaisons, Platteville, Actually, uh, it looks like they have one for virtually every border commission. So there's seven members of the council. They average three. Um, nobody else goes higher than that, although Fond du Lac's at 15. So you can see that these are, we're not alone in this. This, this, is, this is common to everybody. So if you look at these um, boards you're talking about, Mark, and why, where council members sit on them, I think it's because they have an overall vision of the city. You know, parking throughout the city, traffic throughout the city, um, you know, uh, the museum board, city-owned museum. So I think putting council members on certain boards is based on what the <laughs> what the board is really is, and that's why they want a council member on here. Like the parks, we have 17 parks throughout the city of Oshkosh. That's a big chunk of land that is used by our citizens. So I think that's the value of oh, why sure. these boards want council members on them. And I think that's why the more boards would like, if you ask the boards that don't have a council liaison, if they want a council liaison, 
I would venture to guess that most of them would say, sure, we'll have another one. Then we're going to make it on an average of three assignments per. So, and you can see that's what happened in Platteville. Um, so, anyway, so that just kind of lays out you're not alone in terms of the council liaison uh, demands that your colleagues in other communities are also seeing that. Another thing, too, according to what Steve said, you know, the, the, the work we do at any border commission, be it landmarks or plan, it's more in-depth as to what the subject matter is before it gets to the council. So we're there that we can answer questions. Right. Guys, you know, what all do you, I mean, you know, plan commission, we can spend a lot of that time on just one item. And it's pretty well vetted by the time it gets to us. So sure. that's I mean, the biggest, biggest advantage. The staff reports certainly have value but the flavor of the meeting, right. the proceedings that you bring has value. There's no question about that. Anyway, I, I kind of already brushed over these, the, the, the council liaisons, 15, none are required by statute. So they're all a result of council policies. So some considerations that, that staff went through as we were evaluating this. Um, and these are more general statements. And as we looked at these, uh, one of the things we thought of is whether you're considering it now because you're maybe interested in paring down the number of committees, these questions, if you just reword them just slightly, could also apply if you're considering adding a committee. And can you and ask yourself these types of questions. Can any of the 14 local options be absorbed into any of the 10 required BCCs? Do any of the 14 local options share a compatible mission or a common liaison department. And there's a, Appendix D has the listing of the distribution of boards, commissions, and committees based on the primary department's assignments. Community development leads the pack with 12, but I think the very nature of the word community development, that's very normal. Most communities, if you talk about where you have your biggest concentration of citizen committees, it's in community development planning because that's the nature of that's the nature of that beast. But you can see that, you know, administrative services um, has two. Transportation, you know, one of our smallest departments has three. So um, you can take a look at these and do they share a compatible mission or a common liaison or department? Are any of the missions of the local option BCCs outdated or in need of reconsideration? The example that I that I typically use is uh, the council had created an urban wildlife committee a few years back when the quarry deer thing became a big issue. But after a few years, the committee itself recommended their own disbandment because they felt going along the lines of number three here is that uh, maybe our missions become outdated or needs to be reconsidered. And the council said, thank you, and they disbanded them. Um, are any boards, commissions, committees duplicating the work of another one? That's a judgment call. You know, you can sit you could sit and argue that. That's for you guys to collectively uh, decide. Can any of the, the uh, BCCs be considered an ad hoc committee to address specific issues on an as-needed basis as opposed to being a regularly scheduled type of uh, group? And then lastly, instead of creating a new board commissioner committee, and this is kind of the one, if you're looking at new ones, you know, can issues be referred to an existing board commissioner committee as an ad hoc assignment or just would you guys take a look at that and just see what happens so those are Mark? generally those things um, on your item number five up there uh, regarding the as needed basis would you still have the committees or boards formed how they are currently with a scheduled meeting that you just cancel or would you try to give notice ahead of time just so that you're kind of guaranteed a quorum like what how would you work that in regards to the ad as needed basis um I, the as needed would be um we've got an issue that we want to work on the, the council wants to work on rather than creating a committee could one of the boards or commissions say let's make this an ad hoc <coughs> it could be a subcommittee of that group how do you could, guarantee a quorum then once you decide who the group is and you give them a charge, then it would be... Uh, it goes on their agenda, right? Yeah, you say, we're gonna make a committee of five. Think of like the council, the, the subcommittee the council created for itself. It's only three of you for the, for the council uh, chambers. Chambers. chambers, and it's mayor, 
uh, Councilmember Palmieri, Deputy Mayor Herman. So three. And now that technically is a formal committee. We have to notice that group. So it kind of is like that. It's a narrow issue. You don't. It, the council decided, <coughs> let's send three of us to that. And it's limited in scope. Right. And then done, your scope. Done. Yeah, and that's it, the we're scope. Done. Right. And we, Once we're done, we're done, yeah. basically. So when you're done, you're done. And, and then you know, and, you're, and then you just thank you for your service, whether it's a citizen committee or a, a council subcommittee. Can you do more of those if something like that comes up? Um, so that was, those are the considerations that we went through <coughs> before we went to the different options. And so some of these options, and again, if you disagree with them, I will, res I will respect your disagreement 100% because uh, they, just, they can just, everybody has their own comfort zone with these. Um, as I mentioned, on Appendix D, transportation, one of our smallest departments, has three committees. You have three separate groups of minutes. Uh, the secretary, the administrative assistant for Mr. Collins, comes to the meeting. That person comes whether or not uh, uh, quorum shows up or not. And then you're, you're paying that person either to be there, sometimes even be there on overtime. Uh, consolidate the parking utility and traffic review advisory board into a single parking and traffic committee or consolidate them with transit into a single transportation committee. Just food for thought. You could also argue you could put bike and pet in there as part say, of the transit would, yeah. like, can, Now you're thinking. I mean, those I mean, are the things. Transportation, you know, be it bike, car, bus, your feet. Transportation is transportation. So and you could you could do bike, that. Those lots by transportation. So. And there's always been, with respect to bike and pet, there's there's been multiple debates going on amongst the committee. Should um, should it be with transportation or should it be with planning? Should if it's Assigned to planning, should transportation people be there? I mean, so you get that issue all the time. That's actually come up in Bike and Ped where we have invited, you know, either Jim Gody or Jim from transportation directly to attend our meetings because there is a lot of overlap. There is mm -hmm. a lot of yeah, As you get into you the know, implementation and questions, right? So it, I, there would be value in that, and yeah. I can see support from Bike and Ped. In is that, that kind well. of a sense that you're getting from? folks on the committee that uh, we have not discussed oh, this yeah. but I from previous meetings we have asked for input from Jim Collins and Steve Cody in the past. Yeah. No, and it, it would be and it would make more if these were not original right. observations no, so. and, and, yeah. and not not to jump too far ahead but I, I I would think that bike and ped would be more of a would be more in line with this than it would be putting them in with the sustainability you could, yeah. even though it's <laughs> I mean you can argue bike uh, you know bike you know with sustainable but I think it's it fits more under the transportation than it would be under uh, sustainability and, and I can give you my thinking but I, I again we're never disagree decisions on tonight issues. so yeah combine arts and beautification the Grand Opera House Advisory Board into the Landmarks Commission and the, the logic behind that was just that uh, the Landmarks Commission has an overall mission of preserving historical structures and recognizing public art and architecture. Whenever we have the Acanthus Awards, they're talking about art and architecture as it builds in. Um, Arts and Beautification was created a few years ago to address public art. Um, that's a pretty narrow mission. Do you want uh, Is it? Do you want to keep it in that way because you feel that's important? If you do, that's great. Um, the Grand Opera House Advisory Board is to take a look at one specific. Um, facility that we actually have an independent nonprofit board that has a council liaison. Um, that's been a sensitive issue um, and I'll just share the story because most of you weren't here when it when the discussion happened but this isn't the first council that's debated this issue when the council debated it the only one that was on the table was the Grand Opera House Advisory Board and nobody could do it. It's like yeah but these people have been serving for 25 years and and they do you have a dedicated you have a dedicated group of people there, let me tell you. They care about the grand, and they were the ones, they probably date back to the 80s when they say, those people saved the grand. If you want to give credit to anybody, you know, they're the ones who pushed the issue, got council to put it on the ballot, and once council had it created, it was like, well, these are the people to run. But then as the foundation got created, their, their mission kind of changed. But again, it's a dedicated group of people. It would make sense to have the Grand Opera House Advisory Board part of uh, the landmarks because 
we do own the building, you know, they do come to us if they're going to do something. It has to go through landmarks, the same thing. You know, the library we own, we own this building, we own the museum, and I think all of these city-owned structures, because of their historic value, should go through the Landmarks Commission. I don't think, uh, Caroline, you're on the Arts and Beautification. I think it's a separate issue from the historic preservation. We're just trying to get that Arts and Beautification up and running. And um, there's a lot of issues that technically are nothing, nothing historical right now. One of the options is to eliminate the uh, advisory board completely because the the work of the foundation maybe has supplanted that. Again, something for the for the council to think about. Can we, that's a question for Lynn and you, can we, if we decide to roll this into one, can we increase the number of members of Landmarks or some of those people into the Landmarks Commission? Landmarks is on the, the required list, so I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, we'd have to just look at the statute, but in like likely you probably can. I think that would we be would a nice way of doing it. Want to check that. the statute on that. But the other issue with increasing the size of the committee then is, is you also then increase the size of the quorum required. Right. So you could actually make it the situation where it may become difficult to get a quorum for meetings there's that delicate balance between having the right size to get the work done, but <coughs> not being so large that you can't pull a quorum together. Could you do an initial group <coughs> a larger size than after a year look at it and say, oh, we're not getting quorum? Well, we'd have, as related to this, we'd have to check what the statute is. Look at the statute. Because Landmarks is a, I, a required one by statute, so statute okay. dictates it. If it was a, a, a local option, you can pretty much do whatever whatever you feel because like you said the Grand Opera House Advisory Board has dedicated members you just don't want to leave them on the cold you know and say thanks for your 20 years of service but there's no longer a board mm -hmm. so and this doesn't even include some of our like public private partnership type things like go ADC and JRB and correct we're board just of health, getting it, yeah. Because we have a member that sits, city has a member, a council member that sits on board of health. Right. Board of health, yeah. And it's not a, it's not a mandate that we have one, but it's a practical reality that we should have one, and that's why it's, it's always good. I, so I didn't even to. get into those issues, and uh, so if, if I missed that, I apologize. Oh, but no, no, I, there was the monster was only so big, and my arms were only so long. So I, I got to. Well, you know, I think the the key thing in a review like this is obviously we need citizen participation we want citizen participation but i know sometimes in some of these smaller boards they don't get the quorum because they really don't have an agenda because but if you start consolidating and putting two or three items on one committee they're going to have more reasons to meet and those board members will come to the meeting or the other thing is is that if you change you know a lot of these their meetings are scheduled monthly right but there may not be something on this agenda. You can look at maybe scheduling them quarterly. Right. Or sure, it's up to the committees, yeah. yeah. For example, the plan commission, there have been occasions when we're in and out in 10 or 15 minutes. There's been others when there's three hours. It right. What's on the agenda? agenda. But I, you know, I sat on the parking utility four years of my eight, eight years council, and most of the time we didn't meet because there's no agenda items. But if we were tied with the traffic review or one, a couple other committees then there would be a reason for that that group to meet because you would have other issues to work on mm -hmm. I think that's the important piece I think citizen time is valuable too as much exactly. as council time is exactly so is the value of the citizen time and they want to make sure that there's a reason for them to come to a meeting and so I think looking at that is, is a big piece of it too um, and you know sometimes we do have to decide that a committee is no longer needed whether they've been on it for five years, ten years, or one year, or twenty. The urban wildlife. We yeah, I solved mean, solve the problem. <clears throat> right. Years and, uh. Just glancing at the statute, since you talked long enough for me, uh, I don't see that there's any requirement about the numbers for landmarks commission. You could do that. Uh, one of the other ones is to restructure long-range finance as an ad hoc committee. Um, you know, the the awkward part of of long-range finance is that there's a lot of things you could get involved in. And there were debates early on whether that should be 
somewhat of a budget review committee, the council decided, well, we should be involved in that because we're the we're the ones as the board of directors of the city to make those those calls, and it's already a time-consuming process. Um, do you do that? Um, adding another layer is not required by law, but it may make it more difficult for the council to ultimately approve it. Another way, uh, there are another way of looking at it. There are some things that I think the committee's done and and been very valuable to us. Uh, some of the things that are more required: our investment policy, our fund balance policy. Those are things that that fees. group did. Fees and the um, the point system, the evaluation for the um, CIPs. CIPs, which you know that's uh, um, I have found that to be of great value. Um, it may be appropriate to maybe look at those things once every uh, three to five years. So could you replace those with task uh, a task Ad force, or, yeah. and you could do that. Um, and I know that uh, quorums have been an issue, for example, with that committee. That may solve the problem if they got a focus to something to work on specifically. Uh, you may get better results. Um, equal uh, excuse me, equal housing opportunity commission. Uh, restructure that to make that an ad hoc. Uh, we have not had a meeting for this group, but there is a requirement that we have it. Could it either be ad hoc so that when something comes up? Uh, I had somebody introduce themselves <coughs> to me right after I started with the city in 2008, and they said, oh, I'm the chair of the Equal Housing Opportunity Committee. And I said, well, that's nice, and I didn't give much thought to it until he said, and we, I haven't, we haven't met since I became the chairman. <laughs> so it was seven years, and he had been <coughs> appointed, and that committee only meets when there is a complaint. Can that be restructured as an ad hoc committee? Because I think we keep reappointing these poor people, and now that person's up to uh, 16 years, and the person hasn't had a single meeting so there's maybe, never been a complaint not on that no not could they be tied into the <coughs> to the other one now that we just created with the, the rental house rental 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 that house. was one of the the things that I, I i kicked out there that that's something we could talk about and i that's the next one okay restructure rental housing is an ad hoc committee or consolidate with equal <coughs> housing opportunity commission that's that, that's one of the things we could it's look all at. One, it's really one of the same because um, one of the original issues that came up with the Equal Housing Opportunity, and it really shows you how things get dated over time, it was the concern was about um, uh, single women being discriminated against when they wanted to get housing for their family. That may still exist, but it was a bigger issue 20 years ago than it is today, but could that be done? Is that a legitimate issue with rental housing? I would say it is. So something that again, something to think about. Um, the council already kicked this one around to you. What do you do with the bike and ped? Here's the reason I put these two together. And, and the, the logic behind it was the frustrations, and I say frustrations, um, and this has happened at, at the committee that with the board and commission chairs, they the common complaint from the chair of both of those groups is because they don't really have a specific commit a specific department I mean you can I've assigned planning to bike and ped because a lot of that is planning planning oh, plan. for bike and ped but the implementation doesn't lie with planning the implementation lies with engineering and or transportation so on the on the planning side it's a great idea on the implementation side it's not as good an idea so there's no one department um, similarly sustainability that's always been Originally, sustainability was called energy, energy and environment, and it was assigned to, who wants to guess? Don't guess, because I know you know, Lori. Does anybody remember? It was under purchasing. Why purchasing? Because per facilities was also under purchasing, and it was felt that uh, looking at the facilities and making them more uh, energy efficient was a good thing to do. Uh, I came and said, every sustainability type of board I've seen has come out of planning. Again, develop the plan, then implement the plan. But the challenge has been, and, and I think the, the SAB has had some legitimate gripes over the years. Uh, and, and I am probably near the top, if not at the top of the list, uh, of violators of that. When we were working on the public works garage, it wasn't until we were getting ready to go out to bid, we didn't go to the SAB. Um, when we did the uh, storm uh, water pump station 
at Menominee Park. <coughs> we had great public input sessions with the neighbors there, but we didn't go to SAB. And somebody said, did you ever hear of a green roof, Mark? And I said, I don't care, care what color you paint it. Uh, <laughs> so there was a little learning on Mark's side. And so, and I think it pointed it out. And, I, and I've shared that with uh, Chairman Margie Davey and we've had a laugh over that, I don't care what color the roof is. But the reality is they had ideas that went through. Why? Because they're not necessarily assigned to a, a department on the implementation side, but they're strong on the planning side. So do we have a sustainability plan? Yes, we do. But the implementation stuff is a little tighter. So those two, because they share the same type of concern about not having a home department for, for this because they're so broad in their mission that that makes it a little tougher. But Caroline, um, with Bike and Ped, would you say that a number of the folks that are on Bike and Ped are there because they would like to share the road and share the transportation, our transportation networks as an equal, I guess? Absolutely. Our, it's a mission of our members. That's why right. they're there because right. they want their input, they want to make it a better city for people not in a vehicle. And, and you know what, it's, what's really interesting is, and maybe it's a matter of maturation of the groups. Getting the plan done is really important, <coughs> but then implementing the plan is important too. And that could be an issue, has it matured that you move it someplace else now that it has matured? Because we do have a, a bike and ped plan. So the planning side isn't, uh, as necessary as the implementation side now. And I think you have advocates on that committee that just want to get these done. They want to, you know, is it going to be a, a dedicated bike lane? Is it going to be a Shero? That's an implementation side thing. That's not necessarily a planning side thing. Well, and I think that there may be some perspectives on the SAB on that sustainability advisory that they might be more desiring of being uh, rolled in with plan commission because of land use and or consolidate with the plan commission right, so right. yeah and yeah. So, so right yeah it could go either way yeah um, now now I'm switching gears a little bit again these are all food for thought remove council liaisons as required members and in, in the in the text of my report it's really more about making maybe make council members ex officio I think the value that that I've seen and heard over the years, and I've seen it implemented here very well, is that it's very important that you're there. That flavor of the meeting, it sounds corny, but it is not. Um, I have seen things over the years um, hinge on the input of a council member saying, you're missing it, I was there, this is what happened. And sometimes the, the, the person isn't even advocating their own position. But if you're doing a liaison job, you're given the whole perspective of one group. You're an envoy. Do you need a vote? Um, I, I'll leave that to you to answer. Do you need the vote? Because when it goes to council, you get the ultimate vote. Um, but if you don't make it, the danger, and Lynn and I discussed this, the danger is do you make it, do you feel like then you don't need to be there? And my message to you is if you absolutely are needed there. In fact, you're going to be needed there more as an ex officio than you are with, with a vote because that's you're the one being the envoy going to the full council. Um, well, I think it depends on your philosophical view as to, since it is optional, why council members are liaisons. Are, you know, some may feel like you know, they're selecting areas of interest because you know, it's a champion type Thing, advocate whereas others you know look at it more mm -hmm. as a reporting you know neutral um, so I guess it just depends on yeah, how I, we I agree with Gloria and I go back to what when I first got on council and, and uh, Mary Teller you know he said citizens look at the council member as an important person they don't want them maybe leading the committee because then that's right. like steering exactly where the committee is going to go but you're still an important piece be, and, and they value that council member and I, I that's an important thing because I've been asked to chair numerous committees and I absolutely refuse <coughs> I don't think that's our role our role is to be there as that liaison and let them make the, the decisions and you know, we can have a vote but 
know, the idea is it, it also shows that <laughs> there's an interest in this committee. Yes, or board that and that's it, that, that they're value. relevant. That, that they're relevant. Value value the it validates the them. Value of the committee. Yep. And but if you didn't make a meeting, then you wouldn't hit hurt a quorum, because yeah. one of the things you know as a liaison to multiple committees, you're getting pulled in a lot of different directions. This would enable you to miss a meeting without uh, the same guilt, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Um, mm -hmm. But it doesn't, it shouldn't diminish the importance of your role. And so that's just a consideration. And it sounds like you, you're at least thinking about those types of things. Well, if, I, if I have to miss a plan commission or a landmarks meeting, I will check with Debbie first to make sure, is this going to cause a quorum problem? If so, right. I, can, I can rearrange a schedule right. to, to get there. I think you make that commitment when you run for council that you're going to be on a couple boards and they're going to meet separate, and that's part of the job. Um, I agree. <coughs> it was mentioned earlier, you could take a look at some of these committees and you could change the frequency of the meetings. Um, or if you consolidate, you may not need to because, uh, as uh, Deputy Mayor Herman mentioned, you know, if you give them more to do, then they've got more reason to, more meet. Reason to meet. So, But frequency is certainly there, uh, and you can see from uh, Appendix A some of the candidates for possible uh, changes in that. Change membership criteria for local option committees. And I'm going to defer to the mayor because we have had this discussion with the chairs of the boards and commissions. I put a slight twist on this because the required boards and commissions have some specific guidelines. Now, that doesn't mean they all have to be city residents. In fact, for example, the library board and the bid mm -hmm. board, they both have some guidelines in terms of uh, who should, who may and may not be on <coughs> those committees or some required memberships. And in the case of the bid, it's you want membership of businesses as well as ownership interests so you've got those things in there so i just put a different twist on this and just said for your local option committees now maybe um i remember this early on when um uh, long-range finance was created uh mayor tower said oh i think i know somebody at the university who would make a good member and when he was all ready to uh, recommend appointment to that person then found out that she didn't live in the city. But does that necessarily, he said, boy, it's too bad. Um, now, just I just used that one example, and I know you've heard that before, because you meet somebody, you think they might be a good person for a board or commission, you do the ask, and then you're told, oh, but I live here or there. Only local option. The local options don't have quasi-judicial quasi-legislative authority. The required boards and commissions, some of those things do. And from a policy standpoint, you probably don't want to, I don't think in some cases the law won't allow it, but from a policy standpoint, that makes sense because you don't want to necessarily start delegating things on a quasi-judicial nature to a non-resident. But if it's stuff like bike and ped, if you've got a great bicycle you know, advocate or somebody who's knowledgeable about bicycle issues, and they don't have any authority except to recommend something to the council, maybe it's okay. Again, that's a very personal issue. You decide who you want on your boards, commissions, and committees. But it's something to think about. Um, well, it comes down to the museum, for example. They're not just history of Oshkosh. It's history pretty much of the county. Are there people there that would be good members of that board because they're interested in the history of the, history of the county? The other thing is there's a lot of people who've approached me. Leadership's a good example. You go through that list of 10 uh, participants, and you get, it ends out pretty fast as to who lives in Oshkosh. So are we missing people who are very involved in the community that just don't happen to live in the Oshkosh? So I think we've got to think about that. However they serve on the board, if they're, if they're a non-voting member but their input is valued, I think we have to consider that pretty heavily. And, uh, I would say that, you know, I've made presentations to Leadership Oshkosh since I've been here, and about half the class are non-residents. But they care enough that they're there, but they, but that's just one example. I've been on the United Way board. I've never done a survey of it, but I know there's a handful of folks that don't live in the, in the city itself. Clearly, it doesn't mean they don't care. It just means they just happen to live 
at a different That's postal it. address those, than us. But those attendees will serve as an adjunct on a board during their duration right. in leadership mm -hmm. Oshkosh. So you get people who are talking about going over there on a whatever board. Mm -hmm. They make a great board, 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 member, board member, but they live in the town of Algoma. Mm -hmm. So I think that's an area we've got to really, the, the legal aspects of it, but look at it hard and fast. My conclusions are very general, and I think council has glommed on to the, the flavor of the report. The realignment was a po component of our strategic plan, so it's very appropriate that this discussion take place. It wasn't intended to diminish the worker value of our boards and commissions but rather respect their purpose. Uh, and I hope, I, I, I hope that anybody who may hear through the grapevine, while Mark proposed to get rid of long range finance, you know, please understand that the work of that committee is very important. How you organize that work is really more the issue. And then the options are just to provide, you know, structures to efficiently, effectively, and comprehensively consider issues that impact our community. So that's, that's pretty much it. Um, what are you looking for? Well, it, it, what are you looking for? Uh -huh. <laughs> I, think the, in our court. I think the next steps are, I, I think you need to put this on the agenda and whether you use my recommendations or my options as a starting point. But I, I, I already heard some of you throw out, well, what about this twist on this idea? Absolutely. Um, well, I could see, too, for example, we didn't even get to the discussion about diversity or inclusion, and I know that we've never really come to a conclusion on that, but if we were going ad hoc with the Equal Rights um, Commission or um, rental housing, you know, perhaps there's an opportunity that that could come in under that group umbrella if that were to materialize. Yeah. So you probably put it under... I have somebody, the mayor, or somebody put it under council discussion direction, and we can have those discussions. Mark, would yeah. it be worthwhile uh, to, well, I don't know who is on what or when other meetings are, but to bring this to the boards and committees that we are currently serving on to get any sense of recommendation uh, we from that? We want to present this to the, the chairs of the boards and commissions at our next meeting, which is... Uh, early July. I know a couple July. of committees have so that would be ready. Uh, it's been discussed at the Parks Board, I believe, and a little bit. And parking utilities talked utilities, about it, talked transit, about tra transit, or, um, traffic, traffic review. review. With our quarterly meetings with the chairs, though, we right. ask if you can't make it as the chair, send someone. Mm -hmm. Some boards and commissions that no one has ever shown up. One of the things I could do, and, and but I don't want necessarily the, my options to be the only ideas, but what I could do is maybe uh, list these options on a piece of paper and on a scale of one to five, one you don't like it, five you like it a lot, at least give you a flavor of your reaction to it. Does that sound okay? Well, I was just going to suggest maybe we have like a mini survey, you know, that that gets rolled up into the discussion at council, the, the survey of those participants in each of the boards and commissions. And maybe even a question that says if your board or commission rolls into another one, would you be interested in continuing to serve? Because yeah. maybe they would right. not know right. because they, they only got on there for that one reason. And now if that's consolidated with a bunch of stuff that they're not really interested in, so that might be an impact too. We might want to survey our citizen volunteers in that survey of, you know, we're looking at consolidation and maybe they have some ideas too that would work. Well, so value is all, it's all about value. The value of tape in the meeting is that we can Lynn and I can talk to staff tomorrow and, and take a look at these and maybe take some of these comments and figure out how to, because uh, I heard that is, do we survey boards and commission members? And staff would be my yeah. desire because staff too. are the ones who are getting pulled the most. Right. I mean, while council members, you know, we're, we're part-timers really, but the staff are the ones who really get sliced and diced up through all of those. My suspicion is that boards or commissions are generally I mean, they they volunteered to serve on these. I think they think their work is very important. Mm -hmm. I don't think you're going to hear, you know, do you want to get rid of your board or committee? No, of course not, um, because I've served what on about it. about special events committee? We didn't even talk about them. That's just a staff. But that's an ad hoc. That's a ad, 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 ad hoc right? by staff. Yeah. We're not even, we don't have anybody. Okay, we're, that's all I have. I know we council meeting in 10 minutes. So. Thank you for listening. Thank you. The Oshkosh Common Council is currently in a break. 
For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. This is GovTV, opening accessibility and understanding of local government, helping you to be informed and involved. Also streaming live and on demand at oshkoshmedia.org and radio simulcast on Oshkosh FM 101.9. Like us on Facebook at our Oshkosh Media page. For a schedule of all Gov TV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. Please stay with us. Coverage will resume shortly. The Oshkosh Common Council is currently in a break. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. This is GovTV, opening accessibility and understanding of local government, helping you to be informed and involved. Also streaming live and on demand at oshkoshmedia.org and radio simulcast on Oshkosh FM 101.9. Like us on Facebook at our Oshkosh Media page. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. Please stay with us. Coverage will resume shortly.